Hello, my name is Andrew Greenfield, and today I'm going to take you on a tour of the IBM Flash System A9000 HyperSwap functionality using live I.O. on a host between two A9000 systems. Let's actually investigate the setup right now first. You'll see that I have in the Hyperscale Manager highlighted Tyron, and Tyron is connected to another A9000, which I'm about to bring up right now called Winter is Coming. As you can see, Tyron the Imp on the left-hand side is connected to Winter's Coming. So I have an A9000 talking to an, another A9000. You can also export this as a CSV if you'd like as well. Now, we have those two A9000s. Let's actually talk about the host itself. So the host is called XIV number two, and I want to bring up its connectivity diagram. So as you can see, this XIV2 host out of its fiber channel ports is not only connected to Blue-Eyed Dragon, but we'll actually scroll down. You'll see it's connected to Tyron the Imp, as well as Winter is Coming. So this one host is actually talking to three A9000 systems. We're only focusing on the bottom two. So as you can see, Winter is Coming, as well as Tyron the Imp. And now let's actually go into the actual volumes, where you'll actually see the live I.O. going. So the first thing we're going to do is I want to make sure you can see all of the volumes. So as it updates on the screen right here, you can actually see that we actually have all six volumes selected. You can actually see the, the total volume sizes. And on another screen here, just to make it easier for us, you can see the live I.O. I'm going to actually use a tool tip here so you can actually see that the primary in this case is winter is coming where you can see the bulk of the IO on those three volumes and the mirror of those volumes or their hyper swap equivalents on Tyron is getting very little. Remember they are getting just a copy of the data. Now that we've looked at the performance statistics let's actually dive a little bit deeper into the actual mirroring relationship on the next screen. Once we bring up any particular volume it'll actually talk about that the quorum witness is alive and well the systems are connected. We are in active-active situation. We're synchronized. And as you can see here in the primary, it is the winter's coming. And the secondary is Tyron. And we saw this before, and I'll bring it up again, right here, that Tyron is getting the secondary copy. The primary, again, is winter's coming. And you can see that with the IOPS up above. Now, let's talk about pathing. Here I am actually SSH'd into XIV2, and you can actually see the MPath SL. You'll notice that I have all of these paths, and you'll see the active ready running as well as the ones that are secondary. So, without further ado, let's actually go into our next round of doing a failover and seeing what happens when a Lua and the multipath actually will automatically take over when I will fail over from the primary to the secondary and how that shows up on the GUI. So we have live I.O. going. And now let's create a failover situation. In this next step, we're going to block the primary network communication to the quorum witness so that the primary array can no longer talk. And that, remember, the primary array is winter's coming. You can see this on the, the chart up above on the screen where all the primary I.O. is going. And then to make sure it does a complete failover, we're going to then block the replication ports from winter's coming or the primary. So that means our secondary or Tyron the imp will actually take over. So as you can see right now, I've started to block the quorum witness. The connectivity is down. So notice the quorum witness on our screen here. It says, uh-oh, I can't talk to my primary. Okay, so as you can see, though, the I.O. is still going on. Not a problem. And I'll do a multi-path here. So you can actually see that I still have my paths ready. And let's actually go back here in a few seconds when I block the replication ports to the primary it's actually going to change this display where winter's coming will become IO blocked 
and Tyron the imp, which it says secondary, will become the new primary. And there it is. Look at that. Almost as if magic were going on. Notice the I.O. blocked on the screen in front of you. And auto failover says it's been disabled because the quorum witness is no longer available. So that's where our active active. And also take a look. There it is. The new primary has become Tyron. The primary that's blocked is the former primary. And let's actually go back so you can actually see that during the failover, we actually had a momentary dip here. And as you can see, it immediately picked back up where the host has actually changed its pass and switched on over. Notice where it says Tyron the Imp is now our primary. And since we have IO blocked on our former primary, it says zero IOPS. And actually, we'll take a look here at our pass and see how they've updated. So as you can see here, now look at our primary path has actually been failed. And we're using our secondary path as our primary path. And again, let me just bring this back up here again. You can see that, yes, it is on the secondary site. And so you can see a little bit of the delay from before. And the I.O. is blocked. The failover capability is going to be resolved in a couple minutes when we actually fail back over. But as you can see right here, winter is coming, my former primary. All the I.O. is blocked, and all of the I.O. is actually going to Tyron the Imp. And let's actually change this now to a complete reversal and actually show how to resolve the situation here. But as you can see down below, my IOPS is still going well over 30,000 IOPS actually, all said and done. On just one volume, the rest of them hitting closer to almost 60,000 IOPS. Now that we have a problem, let's actually resolve the problem. You can see that my IO is still going quite strong here. So let's actually start fixing the problem here. So the first thing I'm going to do is start to restore some of those links. So let's look on the screen here and let's focus on some of the reds that you're actually seeing. So as you can see, I can't do an automatic fail back because we're worried about data integrity. So let's actually get some of my links back up. So I'm actually going to restore the quorum witness so that it can talk to the primary. And then also, I'm going to restore the former primary links on replication so that it can actually talk to the new primary. And actually, you can see the green just happened there. So notice the system connectivity. They can actually start talking a little bit. The quorum witness is actually talking, but it's not going to do active-active yet. And it's definitely not synchronized. But still, meanwhile, we actually have I.O. that is still going. Take a look here. It is still going to winter is coming. In fact, Tyron is going to start coming up, as you see here, a little bit here. And let's go back here. So now that we actually have the quorum witness and the system connectivity, let's actually change my role here on all of my blocked IOs. So we're gonna change. So we're gonna change the role here so he can actually go into the secondary. Remember, he was the primary, and that's why I saw the error. So once I click on apply here, there we go. We've now made him the secondary. And now let's resume the replication. We'll actually make him active. We're, we're resuming the replication. So thank you very much for playing along with me, everybody, that we have finally, there you go, the IO is no longer being blocked. Our former primary is now the secondary. Now notice it says unsynchronized, exactly correct. But meanwhile, IO is still continuing unabated, except when we started doing this, we're actually going to be starting to synchronize some of our volumes between all of them. So we're actually going to see that a little bit here. So while the IO was impacted a little bit, it's going to actually come back as we start synchronizing. 
So still, we're on our secondary that became our new primary. And as you can see, Tyron is still our secondary, but it was our former primary. And we're going to start synchronizing up. And again, let's go back to our pass here now. So take a look here. Ah, and this is exactly what we hoped for, is that now it actually can see all of those various paths, even though that some paths are optimized for our particular primary, our new primary versus our secondary. So that's a big thing. Notice our I.O. is still going on here. And let's go back over here. If I pick a particular volume, it'll actually tell me how quick it's going to be and will be all set. So as you can see, as it synchronizes each particular volume, and notice my tree has actually started to light up more greens, that the active active is working because all my ports are now unblocked. It's going to try its best. But we're not going to have an auto failover until we actually have a complete synchronization. And that's when we'll actually fail back to our original winter is coming, which says on the screen right now, secondary. And as you can see, it's coming up quite nicely here. See how it says 35. So we'll let this continue here. As you can see, one volume has completely synchronized, and now we're going to make sure the other volumes are equally synchronized. As you can see, our second volume is already synchronized back up, and we're now on our last volume to be synchronized. As you can see, it's progressing. Our first, second volumes are already set, and as soon as that's done, that's when we will actually do the reversal and put things back to exactly the same way we were in the beginning. And by the way, as you can see, the I.O. is increasing and has not dropped. And if you want, I can actually scroll back so you can actually see a little bit further as well. One of the great things on the Hyperscale Manager is that you can actually pair all of your volumes together. So as you can see right now, as I'm getting synchronized, you can actually see the pairs are working just nicely. And you can actually see that I am now fully synchronized on all of my volumes. And, more importantly, you say to me, hey Andrew, why don't you put things back to where it was? You're still on your secondary. You're absolutely right. So let's actually change now on all of my primaries, which is currently Tyron, but we want to make him go back to being a secondary. So I'm going to grab all my Tyrons right now, and let's actually change their particular role by switching the role back and it says are you sure as you can see I now have changed my icon Tyron has become the secondary winter is again the primary and let's actually take a look as you can see I know was actually getting quite good in the former, and now that we've switched back, it's going to ramp back up again. And last but not least, you can actually see my multipath again, all active and running as we expect. We'll actually show that again, the IO is starting to ramp up here as it was before. Take a look, Tyron had the bulk of the IO. Winter's coming had only secondary as it was synchronizing back up. And then during the failover, back as you can see now Tyron the imp growing bigger and winter is coming is actually starting to take over more of the primary IO load in terms of IOPS and bandwidth per second and again just to make sure everyone can see it I will pair everything back up again so there we are here's my volumes where the primary as well as the secondary notice the difference over here and again, I'll show that over here. The primary is now Winter is Coming, like we had in the beginning of this demo. The secondary is Tyron the Imp. The auto failover has again been resumed. Our volumes are all synchronized. We have active-active. The quorum witness is talking, and all systems are connected and good.
As you can see, the I.O. has completely resumed. Now that the volumes are all synchronized, you can see that Winter's Coming has the bulk of the I.O. again, and Tyron the Imp has the minimum amounts, because as you know, it is a secondary and it's only getting copies of the data. Please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Feel free to reach out to anyone at IBM. Again, this has been a great demo by Joshua Boomer and Andrew Greenfield. Feel free to reach out to us. Talk to you soon.